So is it too soon to say that Nintendo won holiday 2017? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, of course, it's too soon to say it. It hasn't even arrived yet. And with the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4's continued strong sales, obviously the hype behind the X and 4K and all that jazz, uh, it's going to be an interesting holiday period as we have three distinct companies kind of doing different things. We have Sony sort of resting on its current and you know, complete dominance of the market over the past few years, kind of resting on its laurels. You have Xbox kind of panicking. I don't know, maybe it's not panicking, but they've lost all of their exclusive games really for this holiday period besides Forza. So they're really pushing just the whole Xbox One X, you know, play 4K in your living room thing, Uh, which is what Sony pushed with the PlayStation 4 Pro last year. So we'll see how that does. Uh, and then you have Nintendo, who's just decided that, hey, look, we wanted to launch our system outside of the holiday, and then we're going to make our holiday period extremely exciting. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go through the releases that are happening from today through the end of the holiday period, which we're just going to say is the end of December, uh, and just look at the games coming out and talk about why I think that Nintendo practically has this holiday in you know under wraps. There is a caveat to that, and that is obviously Nintendo not being able to supply enough Switches to win the sales figures, but we'll see. So here's what the outlet looks like for October, and I'm just going to go by games I feel are worth mentioning. You know, we got Axiom Verge on October 2017th of this year. Uh, Obviously, Fire Emblem Warriors October 20th. Just Dance, don't know if that's going to matter this year, but we'll see. That comes out October 24th. Obviously, we have Super Mario Odyssey a big one hitting on october 27th sonic forces on the 7th snipper clips plus cut it together on uh, november 10th uh la noir on november 14th the elder scrolls skyrim november 17th resident evil revelations revelations 2 and the collection all come out on november 28th uh in december we have uh xenoblade chronicles coming out on december 1st so if you think about it that's a handful of titles uh, most of which are exclusive. You got snipper clips in there. Uh, you have the uh, <laughs> you have Xenoblade Chronicles two and Mario uh, and even certain releases of third party games. You know, Doom is slotting somewhere in there. Has no announced date yet, but it's just fall twenty seventeen. So that's slotted somewhere in there as well. And while it's already on other platforms, it's only getting a new release this year on Switch. Uh, so it will be considered a new game. It, it's those games, obviously on their own. Super Mario Odyssey is pretty big. Uh, Nintendo, you could tell, is resting on this whole. We want to give you big games. Uh, there are a, a slew of indie games, and you know, a, a couple third-party games still that I didn't mention. But if, when you really think about it, Sony's resting on their current success, which they really should. I mean, some argue that maybe Sony's getting a little cocky these days. You know, they won't do the crossplay thing. They won't do this. They won't do that. But Sony has been so successful this generation uh, that they, it's okay for them to have, you know, a single holiday off. It's not a big deal. Um, Xbox obviously had a lot of their exclusive games. They planned to come out, uh, get, get kind of canned. Uh, Scalebound is the one that really stings with me. Uh, And Crackdown 3 getting delayed sucks. I think the game getting delayed is going to make it better. I mean, we can't really chastise Microsoft for not having Crackdown 3 this year when we as Nintendo fans had to go through that long delay with Breath of the Wild. I mean, come on. Uh, It ended up being, at least in my opinion, worth the wait. Um, So um, hopefully Crackdown 3 ends up being worth the wait. I would rather a game be delayed and done right than rush to market just so they could have had a big game this holiday. Uh, but they were kind of hoping that the Xbox One X hype, uh, the initial people that always seem to purchase new tech, will kind of drive it this holiday period. And then you have Nintendo, who's like, look, we're going to have a few key ex- key uh, multi-platform games like L.A. Noir and stuff and uh, Sonic Forces, but we're going to hit you with the exclusives. Uh, we're going to hit you with that Snipper Clips. We're going to hit you with that Mario. We're going to hit you with that Fire Emblem. We're going to hit you with that Xenoblade. And that combination of games... Combined with Nintendo's already existing library on Switch, which at this point we have to admit is utterly fantastic, uh, I think is enough to push Switch over the top. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to say right now. Oh, you're Nintendo Prime. Of course you think Nintendo is going to win the holiday. I wasn't so confident of it a week ago. And no, it's not that the games didn't change. It's, it's that my mentality has kind of changed with where the Switch is sitting right now. 
Essentially, we made a video about the Switch Kid, and it's about this kid who got the Switch for his birthday and was just freaking out, drawing memories of the N64 kid. We did a video on it. Go check it up in the, click on the I in the upper corner, and you'll get to check that out. Uh, and it made me realize something as I'm, I'm looking at that, and then this, a new article pops up. Uh, I'm going to put a link down to this article in the description below as well. And it's an article on Games Radar. It's by David Houghton. It says, How Nintendo took Switch from the unproven underdog to the king of the Christmas lineup in under a year. And um, I'll just note when you go into it that I disagree with the beginning party mix. A big deal in the first handful of paragraphs about Breath of the Wild and how it kind of became this, you know, game that everyone needs to play while Nintendo just treated it like any other Zelda game. They didn't treat it like any other Zelda game. It was at E3 2016 as the only game, literally the only playable Nintendo game on the show floor. They dedicated their entire show floor booth to Breath of the Wild and something like 50% of their Nintendo Treehouse coverage online was also Breath of the Wild. So let's just be real. No, no Zelda game's ever had that treatment. No game period has had that treatment at E3. So uh, yeah, people bought in after that. That that E3 is what made people realize Nintendo has something special with Breath of the Wild. And I'm not just saying that because I attended that E3. Um, I've been religiously watching E3 for 20 years, and needless to say, no major platform holder has ever done that before with a single game. So, yeah, Nintendo, uh, you know, they definitely treated Breath of the Wild differently. I don't know why they think otherwise. But beyond that, it's a fantastic read. Um, and it basically... Uh, summarizes uh, what some other companies are doing. In fact, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to skip down a, a ways here to their bigger and lesser section. I'm just going to read this to you and we're going to end uh, this video on what this author had to say about Nintendo in this holiday. And uh, yeah, you guys let me know what you think in the comments below when we get through it. So it says bigger and lesser. So Nintendo's apparent non-rivals were taking a very different approach. Sony was consolidating its hype around the artistically minded AAA monsters that have made it such an E3 darling over the last few years. God of War, Days Gone, The Last of Us 2, a glossy new Marvel approved Spider-Man, a fine and understandable strategy, albeit one that ultimately led to a non-consolidation of its release schedule, its big projects requiring big and often extended development cycles, leading to the fruits of its electric conferences ultimately being scattered far and wide. And then there was the eventual pushback at E3 2017, when many felt that Sony's formula for success had become too formulaic. Brutal third-person action, a tumble-down countryside setting, apocalypse optional, a sad character, and a maudlin story. Rise and repeat. I think he meant rinse. Uh, but don't rinse so hard that the grime and blood comes off. As for Microsoft, the Xbox house went full tilt into new hardware with the Xbox One X, all but neglecting games during its quest to sell us the dream of a new box to play games on. Amid a glut of cancellations and delays, its apparent focus on how good games could look when awash with the magic of 4K resolution seemed to distract Microsoft from the matter of what those games would actually be. This Christmas, Microsoft is bringing you a prettier way to play the new Forza 7 and prettier versions of some games you already own. Sony is hoping you remember how good Horizon Zero Dawn and Uncharted The Lost Legacy were and didn't get around to playing them at launch, or, you know, whatever. Or maybe you'll pick up Destiny 2 PlayStation 4 bundle. Destiny 2 is good. Nintendo, though, has the best bespoke Christmas offering it has crafted in years, generations even. Zelda has expanded and will continue to do so. Super Mario Odyssey looks like it might be the most exciting and inventive, creatively liberated main series game since the plumber first went 3D. Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is exactly the kind of unexpected but brilliant major third-party co-production that, five years ago, we couldn't have imagined ever happening again. Splatoon 2 is thriving, as is ARMS. Snipper Clips has got an upgrade in the new Plus version. Golf Story is one of the freshest and most charming RPGs of the year. And on that note, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 will be out in early December. Oh, and Mario Kart 8 remains a brilliant family par party pickup. All of these games and more are 100% Switch exclusive. And on the non-exclusive side, sometimes it's hard to believe that the Switch is even a Nintendo console. The company's semi-recent track record, Doom will be out by Christmas, as will the handheld Play Anywhere version of Skyrim, meaning that you now never need to stop exploring those weekend-devouring side quests upon side quests in bed. Quest in the bathroom. 
No one cares where you quest. That's a faithful, portable version of one of the best FPSs ever made and one of the best Western RPGs on a Nintendo machine less than a year old. Stardew Valley is also finally hitting the platform it was always meant for, as is Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. Rocket League will be a perfect fit for Switch party play over the holidays as well, and this really is just the obvious surface level stuff. Go digging on the Switch eShop and you'll find even more. If there's a lesson to be learned here for rival companies and Nintendo alike, it's that the big bombs don't always hit hardest. The long-term health of a platform isn't just about how attractive its owner's grandest statements sound, but about how appealing, varied, and accommodating it is as a place to both play and create. And with gaming now a bigger, wider, and more niche-friendly medium than ever before, the idea of a mass appeal actually covers a widely varied set of bases. Having previously lost sight of that, interpreting mass appeal as being a vague call to the less engaged, game-oblivious consumer, Nintendo has radically changed its point of view. With the Switch, it is both embracing the wide, exciting newness and variety of scale in modern gaming, and reconnecting with just why its own games are so special. Which is good, because let's face it, a firm understanding of that latter issue once led Nintendo to dominate the industry. And crucially, Nintendo is once again reveling in the value of its uniqueness without trying too hard to be unique. All of this might change, of course. This time next year, I might be praising one of the other platform holders for paving a clever, insightful path to Christmas excitement. But this year, for the first time in far too long, that plaudit goes to Nintendo. Perhaps a product of needing to work harder and smarter than the established consoles, perhaps the result of a great deal of creative introspection, and in truth, probably a combination of both, Nintendo has changed again. But this time, it's changed for the better. It's changed for the future. Now applying its freewheeling creativity to both market and hardware, as well as its games, but by blending that modern, forward view with a long-missed sense of what Nintendo, at heart, really means. It has done a great and very welcome job of changing back. Folks, go read the rest of this editorial. It is absolutely fantastic on gamesradar.com. Link is down in the description. Let me know what you think about Nintendo this holiday and just the general feeling of Switch. If you like this video, you know what to do, and if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.